What's up, good people? It's the Ancestry Chronicle here, the show on Jay Gandhi. Thank you so much for stopping by my YouTube channel. Uh, subscribe, like, and share, and also leave a comment. I love reading your comments, and I, I get back to everybody. So I uh, appreciate that, you know. Appreciate the love everybody's been showing, too. Uh, we're going to be doing, in this, in this one today, we're going to be doing the African Ancestry DNA reveal for my mother-in-law. And so uh, we're going to find out what our results are. So she's from the motherland or <laughs> nah, stay tuned. So we did the African ancestry test and uh, my mother-in-law did her matric clan tracing her mother to mother to mother uh, lineage. And so uh, as far back as we go, that encompasses um, a host of her cousins and daughter, uh, sons, everyone who are descended. We were able to go back on the family tree. We were able to go back to, I believe, the third, my wife's third great-grandmother. That would be my mother-in-law's second great-grandmother. Mm -hmm. And so um, the fallout, her descendants are numerous. And uh, so we have a host of family and relatives that are also on Zoom, Zoom that have joined us, and they're also waiting for the great reveal. So, um, first thing, let me let you know right off the bat is, Mom, your ancestral roots were found on the continent of Mother Africa. All right, um, all right. <laughs> they were found on the <laughs> West, the West Africa uh, specifically. And interesting, interestingly enough, African ancestry has determined that you share maternal genetic ancestry with not one, not two, not even three, oh my. but with four ethnic groups living in three different present day countries in West Africa. So, uh, so, <laughs> so to look for matches, uh, African ancestry has compared parts of your maternally inherited DNA, that's your mitochondrial DNA, uh, to that of people from around the world. And now, just in case you didn't know, in the industry, uh, African ancestry has the largest DNA sample, African, the largest African DNA sample database. And so with that, they have used the largest set of African mitochondria samples available today. And they have found identical 99.4% matches for you with people in each of the four ethnic groups that I will soon reveal. Okay. So some of you may be wondering or just need clarity on, on how can... Um, one mitochondria um, match more than one ethnic group. So, you know, let alone three different countries. So, let me explain. Ethnic groups are not formed around genetic characteristics. Social and cultural characteristics are what ethnic groups are formed around. So, multiple ethnic groups that have different dialects, different customs, rituals, belief systems, they can share the same genetic lineage. And so because of that, African ancestry informed us that they, and I'm quoting them, will often find the same genetic lineage within different groups and regions. And um, there's a way that that's, that's uh, easily explained, easily understood. Um, your clan here is called the, the, the small clan, right, Mom? Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, you all right, Mom? Uh -huh. Okay. <laughs> um, you have family down in the South uh, whose last name is... Give me a family member in the South with the last name. Briggs. 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 You have family in um, um, down South whose last name is, is Jones. So... Um, you have, you know, family 20 minutes away from here whose, whose last name are, is Gandhi. So they identify as Gandhi. They identify as blunt. 
They identify as as Jones. They identify as Briggs. They identify as Miller. As, as Miller. So you got all of these different people, groups, mm -hmm. who self-identify. But if you were to get all of them all across the country and do a DNA test, guess what? They all would share the same DNA, uh, you know, the, the same genetic lineage. And so that's what we've discovered here uh, with your results, okay? So, here we go, everybody. This is interesting now. Um, you guys ready? Yeah, so, we ready. We ready. Dr. Gina Page is one of the co-founders for African Ancestry. She has uh, written you a letter, and in the letter it says, Dear Anne, okay? Don't peek, Mom. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, it is with great pleasure that I report your Matriclan test results. We have determined that you share maternal genetic ancestry with, drum roll, okay, four different people groups, which are the Fula people in Guinea-Bissau, Mende and Timene people in Sierra Leone, and the Pele people living in Liberia today. Wow. This means that at some point in the 500 to 2,000 year history of your maternal lineage, mother to mother to mothers, there was a woman from one of these groups all right, so one of the first countries uh, that we talked about is Guinea-Bissau. So Guinea-Bissau is a tropical country on the, the West Africa's uh, Atlantic coast that's known for national parks and wildlife. It borders Senegal to the north um, and Guinea to the southeast. As a percentage of the population in, in Guinea-Bissau, the Fula people represent just under 17 percent. Uh, Guinea-Bissau was once, this is, I love this part, Guinea-Bissau was once part of the kingdom of Kabu, the Kabu Empire, which was West African and Mandinka Empire, um, was, was a mixture of West African and Mandinka Empire, and it lasted from 1537 to 1867, as well as, um, as well as being a part of the Mali Empire, in West Africa from 1235 A.D. to 1670 A.D. So, present-day Guinea-Bissau is a republic. The main language there is um, the Guinea-Bissau Guinea Creole, whose lexicon derives mostly from Portuguese. And it's spoken in Guinea-Bissau, spoken in Senegal, spoken in, um, spoken in the Gambia as well. So, in 1973, that um, Guinea-Bissau gained its independence, all right? So the next country we talked about was Sierra Leone. Sierra Leone is one of the smallest West African countries. And if you remember, it's infamous for blood diamonds. Mm -hmm. It is one of the areas most devastated by the transatlantic slave trade. So what is unique about Sierra Leone? You asked, Mom? You did ask that, right? Okay. Uh, so uh, Sierra Leone has a special significance in the history of its transatlantic slave trade. Its capital, Freetown, was founded in 1787 by British abolitionists as a home for repatriated former slaves from London and the Americas. Sitting on a coastal peninsula, the city overlooks the Sierra Leone Harbor. Beautiful harbor. And, and that Sierra Leone harbor is the world's third largest natural harbor. Sierra Leone is also known for some of the most beautiful beaches in the world. The most famous Sierra Leonean is, I can't pronounce his name right, and I wish I could, but Singbe Pierre, known as Sink or Sinke, who was the leader of, if you remember, the Amistad Rebels. Uh -oh. Oh, all right. <laughs> so y'all got, so got a little rebel in y'all. <laughs> yeah. uh, 
Uh, most of the Amistad captives were Mende people, including their leader, Singh Pierre. Okay, the Mende, they grow rice as their staple crop, as well as jam and cassava. So that's interesting that they are rice growers because when the Europeans and the people in the Americas, um, the white Americans were looking for labor to work the rice fields in America, they didn't just get anybody. They went and got skilled labor. So they were getting skilled labor. They went to the countries in Africa where people were known to grow rice, and they brought them to the Carolinas, South Carolina, and Georgia area. And if you guys know anything about your history, tracing mom, y'all's history, um, you know both sides of your family come from Georgia and South Carolina. Mm -hmm. And on your father's side, they're actually a Geechee Gullah as well. So mm -hmm. I wouldn't be surprised as we do some more research that we may discover that some of the people on your mother's side were also Gullah Geechee as well. So that makes sense um, that they, uh, you know, came from South Carolina and Georgia uh, being uh, rice growers and of the Mende tribe and things of that nature. So here are some notable people who uh, come from the Mende tribe. Um, Black Thought, who's a rapper from The Roots. <laughs> the actor, um, Isaiah Washington. Okay. okay. Um, one of my favorite dudes, the late uh, actor Michael K. Williams. Okay. okay. Uh, my dude, my dude, uh, Questlove. Okay. Uh, musician, okay. instrumentalist, songwriter, journalist. Here's, here's one for you, Mom. Uh, of all the names, you're going to recognize this one. <laughs> Maya Angelou. Oh, yes. <laughs> yes. Uh, the late Maya Angelou, poet and civil rights activist. Um, Henry Louis uh, Gates Jr., Dr. Oh, Henry Louis Gates, yeah. Dr. Skip, the Harvard professor and activist. Um, and so, also, um, Coretta Scott King, the late Coretta mm. Scott King author, activist, and civil rights leader. And then lastly, uh, and this is interesting, John Legend, he has roots in both the Fula people from Guinea-Bissau, like you, mm -hmm. and the Mende people in Sierra Leone, like you. Wow. Okay. So that's, that's you know, so that's, so that's why he got his singing skills. He got it from you, Mark. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and also, you guys belong to the uh, Timene tribe, uh, which is also... Um, found in Sierra Leone. Uh, the Timene, they speak um, a Niger Congo language. They trace their origins to the, the um, Fauta Jalon region of Guinea. Uh, some Timene remain in Guinea, but the majority migrated southward into what is now northern Sierra Leone. Mm -hmm. So they are predominantly found in the northern province of Sierra Leone. Uh, some Timene are also found in Guinea. So the Timene constitutes the largest ethnic group in Sierra Leone at 35.5% of the total population, which is slightly bigger than the second largest ethnic people, which are the Mende people, at 31.2%. Wow. So you guys, are, you guys are just big. You guys are just, you're big over there, you're big over here. You know, it's a lot of you <laughs> over there, it's a lot of you over here. Uh, so they speak Timene. Um, and in Sierra Leone, the Timene encountered Muslim traders, and as a result, many of them converted to Islam uh, in the following centuries. Uh, also, historically, most Timene people have been farmers, uh, raising rice, cassava, uh, growing peanuts, tobacco, and cola. Um, and about one million people in Sierra Leone identify as Timene. And so the Timene society is also a patrilineal society. And then here are some famous people, some uh, notable people. Um, you know, uh, Idris Elba, his father, mm. is from Sierra Leone. Mm. And so Idris has dual citizenship with Sierra Leone. Consequently, Sierra Leone offers dual citizenship to the test takers of African ancestry who have ancestral roots in Sierra Leone. Ooh. So if you look around and get your dual citizenship, <laughs> ah, you're good to go. And then I would say probably the most famous person that I know, the most notable person that I know who has Sierra Leonean ancestral roots is yours truly. Okay. Yeah. All right. All right. <laughs> Although I'm not from the, the, the uh, Limba tribe, uh, the uh, Timide tribe or the Mende tribe, I am from the Limba 
the uh, Limba people. Uh -huh. uh, but right. um, uh, I love Sierra Leone. I just have such an affection for that country. Um, I actually write for one of their um, one of their uh, magazines, an online magazine companies there. I'm one of the uh, contributing writers as well. So I, I just I have a fondness and a closeness for Sierra Leone. Uh, also, uh, the name Sierra Leone means mountain lion. Mm. It's a translation of mountain lion. And so then the last country, which is still in West Africa, borders Sierra Leone, Guinea, and Cote d'Ivoire on the Atlantic coast. It is officially the Republic of Liberia. Mm. Its official language is English, but over 20 indigenous languages are spoken there, which reflects the country's ethnic and cultural diversity. So the country's capital and the largest city is Monrovia. There's a long story behind that, which I'm not going to get into. It kind of messes me up in my head when I think about it. But this was the first African republic to proclaim its independence and is Africa's first and oldest modern republic. So it began in the early 19th century as a project of the American Colonization Society, which believed that black people would face better chances for freedom and prosperity in Africa than in the United States. And so between 1822 and the outbreak of the American Civil War in 1861, more than 15,000 freed and freeborn black people who uh, faced social and legal oppression in the U.S. along with um, about 3,200 Afro-Caribbeans uh, relocated to Liberia. Um, and the people group that you belong there, again, are to the Pele people, which is the largest ethnic group in Liberia. Wow. Oh, you guys just believe it. <laughs> Y'all believe in making it big. <laughs> uh, um, and they're located primarily in an area of central Liberia extending into Guinea. And they speak uh, Pele language, which belongs to the Mande language family. And despite their yearly heavenly rainfall and rough land, Pele survived mostly on the staple crop of rice. But there again, um, so if you guys have an affinity for rice, know that it's in your blood. It's in your genes. I like rice. All right. Uh, traditionally, the Pele have been farmers, um, you know, mainly growing rice. The word Pele is often used as an adjective to refer to someone as hardworking and very humble in Liberia and Guinea. And a notable uh, Liberian person... Um, Oprah Winfrey. Okay. So, um, what do you think about that, Mo? Oh, that's interesting. I didn't know I had all of that. <laughs> Rich child. So, <laughs> so, so, so let me ask the family. And, 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 and by the way, we have a lot of, 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 of genealogists and family historians on the Zoom call that's a part of um, your family, Mo. Um, they've been doing collectively uh, research, um, some, some of them longer than me, um, mm -hmm. but they've been researching and it's just a wonderful thing to, to see them all come together mm -hmm. and, 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 put, and put their work together. You hear them talk sometimes, I listen to them talk and you know, I helped Dawn do her research and, and things of that nature. So there's a lot of sharing that's going on and just the information that we're researching. And it's always good to have a, a lot of people working on something mm -hmm. collectively together. You know, so I think that's a beautiful thing. So I appreciate yep. all of you who, who also do this kind of work and take this kind of interest in your uh, ancestral heritage. Yes. Well, I have a comment. Um, I think it was like somewhere in the eight, in the 80s or 90s, I was working at a uh, long-term care facility, mm -hmm. and a lot of the staff came from Sierra Leone. So I asked one of the nurses, I said, Look at me, and can you can you tell where you think my ancestors came from in Africa? And she looked at me, and she mentioned Sierra Leone. Ah. So that was in my mind because I worked with so many people from there. So I, I think it's important that we, I don't know, just so we, we talk about how, okay, um, my mother did the test, right? And so we chase like her mother's 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 mother. So I, you know, we have my mom um, in, uh, in England. And her mother was Mayetta Blunt um, Small. Her mother 
was Isadora, or everybody knew her as Dora um, Briggs um, Blunt, and then her mother, which was um, Caroline Lamon's um, um, Briggs Drayton, and then her mother, which was Betsy Lamon. And so um, I just, I think it's important to kind of trace that mm -hmm. um, and just see. And so those, all those people who come from um, Betsy Lamons, those people who are descendants from her, um, we can see that, you know, we've all, we're all able to, to um, trace our ancestry back to these four um, tribes um, or these four, there's four tribes, Ethnic right? Groups. Ethnic groups, four ethnic groups. Um, so I think it, I think it's very interesting. So with um, you know all of the people who are in like the Briggs family and you know the Lamons family and like all of the offspring because we have a large there's a lot of people I'm sure I don't even know half of our family members. Mm -hmm. um, but I just think it's it's great that you know we're able to kind of trace our our ancestry back and as I said I think it's interesting that we're able to trace our, our, our ancestry back to people like those people who were on the, the Amistad and people in Sierra Leone and you know mm. so I just think that we have a rich heritage you know there's so mm. much that you know our people have we have a, we're from a resilient people you know, and um, we've just done, our family members have done so much and they've, they've paved the way for us and we've just come a long way. We've long come, way. you know, there's so many people who they may not be able to, you know, have, we, we have more than they have, um, like materially maybe, you know, in a, in a lot of instances, um, but you know, they've, they've had so much and without them paving the way, mm. we wouldn't have what we have yeah. religiously, um, just all spiritually, just everything, you know, that has been instilled in us. It comes from the things that we were taught. And I, you know, the things that my mother teaches me, mm -hmm. I know that her mother taught her and it, you know, it traces back. And I'm sure that, you know, you can all say the same thing, you know? And so I just, uh, you know, we come from like a great, great people. And so, yeah. you know, just just remember that, just know that. Mm -hmm. So that's that's that's, that's, that's pretty nice. much what I wanted to right. say. But like every everyone on this is this call is we're all connected, you know, and we're we're all family. We all come from the same root. My grandmother told me that so who, her who's mother. Your, who's your grandma? Who's your oh, grandma? Sally Briggs Styles. So she told me that her mother, Caroline Lemons. Briggs Drayton would um, ride side saddle <laughs> on a horse uh, going to help other women deliver their babies. Mm. So that that's interesting. That so is. she was in effect like an early midwife. Mm -hmm. Uh huh. That's exactly what she was. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Exactly what she was. Well, mom. So how do you feel, mom, about uh, now knowing your your ancestral roots? I feel happy about it and I, I remember uh, the word that comes to me is uh, rich. My grandmother Dora Blunt said um, you come from a very rich uh, 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 um, heritage and at the time I, you know, it meant nothing to me really but now as I see this coming out she, yeah. she used that word so much you know a rich Heritage, isn't that something? And and uh, she was she was very proud of her family, but she always would say that to me. And now, uh, proven to be true. <laughs> <laughs> and how far back does your knowledge go of of you just to your grandmother? You you know your great grandmother on that side? No, or? just my okay. grandmother. Okay, I think uh, 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 just collectively, there's many many things that have been passed down you know unknowingly you know we just we don't know but it's there and it's in us and i mean even looking at you know i do, do this research and everything and even looking at some of the studies that they have done and they that even the trauma that we've experienced they they find now that that trauma is in our dna and everything wow. oh, is that right? uh, reading 
and, and reading, um, I read the book by Dr. Joy DeGru. It's called Post Traumatic Slave Syndrome. And it, and, and it talks about how that trauma has been in our DNA because we passed the trauma down because it was never dealt with. And it's still, to this day, is not being dealt with. So this trauma has been passed down generation after generation after generation is, and is learned, but it's also instilled in us and everything as a people. And we, and we don't realize that things like this is the things to help us elevate and, and, and come out of it. We see that we are these special people. It was when the Europeans came in and divided everything up, they actually decided to parcel up land and everything where there became the separation. So these tr four tribes probably was one big family or one big clan group that lived in different parts and they just got divided up into mm -hmm. different times. So we need to understand it in that respect too, because we, we're, we need to re-evaluate how we view the who we are, the who yeah. that we really are. And, um, and it goes deeper than that and everything. I, uh, it goes way deeper than even that. But, you know, I said that to, to say that there's many things and it's pat the good, bad and the ugly has been passed down. And this, this is a catalyst for us to start looking inward and repairing what is there, you know, because if we can't, if we don't start repairing those things and, and accept and looking at it and everything and, we're not going to become, we're not, we're going to keep repeating the same thing. Now we want to become, get better. We want to go back to our greatness that the Most High allowed us to be before, you know, and not hold on to the trauma and the, the disdain and all these different things mm -hmm. that has been placed upon us. So that's, the, that's all. So African Ancestry hereby certifies that Anne Anglin shares maternal lineage, uh, genetic ancestry with Hula people living in Guinea-Bissau, Mende and Temne people living in Sierra Leone, and Pele people living in Liberia. And this is the, the, um, the certificate. And I thank you so much for allowing me the privilege and an honor to reveal to you, Mom, and to you all, yeah. um, your African ancestral roots. So I am the Ancestry Chronicler, the Sean J. Gandy. Thank you so much for stopping by my YouTube channel. Please be sure to like, uh, subscribe, also leave a comment, and share with somebody. Thank you very much. Peace, peace, peace.